Okay, cool. So, Mike, thank you for thanks for joining. Mike is the CEO of a very cool company called Onsip, uh, based out of New York City. And so, before we get started, Mike, do you want to just do like a little bit of an intro and tell us a little bit about you and about Onsip, and then we'll dive into the content. Uh, sure, sure. Uh, I'm I'm probably more comfortable diving into the content, but. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no, so Onsip is a uh, hosted VoIP provider. So we provide uh, VoIP services for small, medium businesses, uh, mostly North American based, but uh, we have a, a fair number of uh, international customers. Uh, me personally, so I, I'm one of the co-founders. Uh, we started this company in 2004. Uh, I've always been right from uh, from graduation. I, I've always been in startup companies, high tech companies, software companies, um, and so it's just a, a, another one in a, in a long line. I kind of end up focusing on the customer facing uh, side of things, typically, so sales, customer service, that kind of stuff. But um, in, in a nutshell, that's not to not to bore people. That that's. Yeah. Yeah, just a little, course, just a little background. So, um, <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna talk about some things that have been happening in the news um, from a WebRTC perspective, from an on or from a SIP trunking perspective. Also, right. um, take a look at some. You know, there's some there's some really interesting stats out there. And um, for those of you guys who are who are watching, I'm gonna I'm gonna post some of these links over in the chat. Um, but one of the first ones was talking about, you know, SIP trunking adoption to reach 62 percent by 2017. I'm, I just pasted right. the, the link for you guys to the article that we're going to take a look at first. Um, so, Mike, I mean, what are you seeing? What's your reaction to that? Is that is that about on target? Is that um, you think that's a little aggressive or what? Like, just what's your reaction yeah. when you see that headline? Yeah, so I read the article. I, I really like the graph with the big, uh, big sloping uh, <laughs> up arrow. Rainbow. But, uh, yeah, <laughs> the, the rainbow up arrow. Um, it, it's it's interesting. I mean, we we've, we've certainly certainly seen the adoption of SIP. Uh, there there's there's just no question at all about that. And we're seeing more and more and more uh, more companies, small, medium businesses, enterprises, really everyone. Um, from uh, VoIP phones using SIP to WebRTC using SIP. Uh, so huge, huge, huge adoption uh, of SIP. We just haven't seen quite as much on the SIP trunking side for, for us. So we, we offer both. We offer both a hosted VoIP solution using SIP and SIP trunking. Uh, we're, we're getting you know, a couple new customers every day of hosted, uh, hosted VoIP. We get uh, only a handful of customers per month on uh, SIP trunking. So I'm not sure. Uh, the, the only thing I can think is some of the new, interesting new products that are coming out. Like uh, there's a really cool Android-based phone from a company called uh, Ubiquity, the uh, Unify phone. Uh, by default, that's kind of a SIP trunking type setup. So you know maybe something like that. Now that, that phone can also work in a hosted um, hosted SIP, hosted VoIP environment, um, but by default, that's it's kind of SIP trunking. Uh, some of the um, uh, some of the Microsoft platform uh, setups are more SIP trunking by default, so maybe they're lumping some of those things in with it. But yeah. no, we're seeing much, much more much more adoption on uh, hosted VoIP than we are with uh, uh, with SIP trunking. Yeah. And what do you think um, is driving this this adoption? Anyways, like, do you think it's just that there's um, you know people have these boxes and they're they're getting older and they just want to access more like current features and and that's you know driving the push towards SIP trunking or what? What do you think is is the main reason for that? Yeah, I, I think the the big reason for the adoption of just SIP in general is yeah, looking for more features, uh, equipment ending uh, nearing the the end of life, and uh, you know it needs to be replaced. And no one, it's it, it's hard to find 
uh, anyone who's making a TDM, uh, a regular like you know, uh, PRI line or, or based uh, PBX nowadays, pretty much if you're if you're making a a, a big hunk of iron PBX, you're you're looking for VoIP, you're looking for SIP. Even even the carriers now, uh, when we interconnect with carriers, it's it's almost pure SIP traffic now, uh, even on the carrier side. So uh, SIP has really replaced. Uh, uh, TDM uh, voice uh, it, uh, across the marketplace, both for enterprises and at the carrier level. And then SIP just kind of became the default uh, protocol for that. Early on, maybe 10 years in that battle a, a long, long time ago. Um, and uh, so it's just, you know, we, we've, uh, VoIP has, has clearly jumped the ch uh, chasm and it's just, you know, part of just general adoption today as, as businesses are, are looking for phone service, they're looking at VoIP and, and uh, they're looking at SIP. Yeah, yeah. So we got an interesting comment over here um, and I don't want to completely jump topics, but I think this is. This is interesting. Um, John, um, hello, John. He just commented and said the last two companies that he worked for didn't even use mm. wired phones, landline, or VoIP. Yep. Everyone used their mobile devices for communication. Um, and then, and then he's saying that they were small companies, yep. like 20, 20 people and less software development companies. So you know, I know that there's uh, within my own company, like I, I kind of expect people to bring their own device now too. Right. And you know, I just pay them a stipend to to use their own device. You know, most because people are comfortable with what, you know, with what they, they yeah. want to use. Um, do you want to comment on that at all or any, anything that you're, yeah, absolutely. you're seeing out there uh, on the it, it, BYOD it's market? Interesting. Or? Just last Friday, I was at a really, really cool uh, company in uh, New York City. Uh, uh, what they do is uh, they use robotic 3D printers. They use the, their armature on them to uh, uh, physically write uh, letters and uh, and envelopes for for marketing campaigns and for uh, for individuals so that they look handwritten and they can uh, you give them writing samples so they you, they kind of make a, a font just for you anyway they were all using their own cell phones and the the quote from the IT director that I was talking to is was that it was time to grow up and we needed a, a real phone system but it, it was the the thing that they needed was the ability for a call mm -hmm. to come in to a main number and then be distributed among a you know four or five six salespeople. So the ability for a call to come in and then go into a queue mm -hmm. and then be able to see the statistics on the queue and who's answering the calls and what hours they're being answered. So uh, it's it's when you need some of that functionality. If you're only talking. Uh, person to person, you're talking, texting, emailing, uh, then then yeah, a uh, you know a, a whole corporate phone system is is probably overkill for what you're looking to do. But as soon as you start to need to make some decisions about staffing, you know, um, where the issue isn't, oh, am I paying you know mm -hmm. two cents a minute here or paying a phone bill there? You're talking about, do I need to hire a whole nother, you know, fifty, sixty, seventy thousand uh, dollar a month person? Um, that's when you need that business intelligence, and that's when you need a, a phone system that can give you that kind of information. Uh, I, I just lost one of my lights, so hold on one second. I'm going to go replace the light, but I, I'll uh, I'll I'll keep listening here. Hold okay. on one second. <laughs> okay. All right. Cool. Well, we'll um. We'll get ready to chat about the next um, the next article here, and I'll post it here to the chat. So this is basically an article talking about WebRTC jobs and how they are on the rise. So I'm going to post this go. here for you guys to check yeah. out for a second while, while we get Mike off. There he is. Um, <laughs> Yay! Um, gotta love like the technical yeah. stuff that that goes on with the video broadcasting and all that. Um, okay, so so WebRTC, it's interesting. You know, I, mm -hmm. I go to all the same you know trade shows and conferences that you guys do, and I know like 
a couple of years ago, this term was was kind of like, oh, it's the future, you know, um, and was was really not not very understood. And this year, I actually like moderated a panel wow. on WebRTC, and it was the most attended panel. Like the the room was packed, and everyone was right. wanting to you know talk about it and understand it. And so. Um, so this didn't really come as that much of a surprise to me that the the jobs are on the rise, but um, but Mike, like, what stood out to yeah, you so from the, um, from this the, article? The research from uh, Black Spot there, yeah, it's over in the uh, over in the comments. Um, I, I I thought it was interesting. I mean, it's mostly a, a marketing piece for them and for you to sign up for their research. Uh, and they they mentioned some of the things, some of the other news that's that's come out this year of over a billion dollars worth of uh, funding in WebRTC companies. Uh, very cool. So it's it it is hot. Um, yes. It's a little bit of still. It's a little bit of a, a solution looking for looking for problems. We've had uh, a, a good number of uh, customers come in and looking at our WebRTC solution for problems that 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 they had. And so that's uh, that's been interesting to see where where those applications are. And it's everything from from gaming to medical to to tourism. So it's pretty neat. Um, I, I thought that it was interesting that they mentioned uh, ADP as uh, one of the companies that that's hiring. I, I think that's so security, I think, is a really interesting application for WebRTC. Uh, it's kind of the ability to have maybe a, uh, to do your video monitoring, um, security monitoring over uh, over WebRTC. I think that's uh, that's pretty cool. That should lower the cost of that uh, quite significantly if you can just use you know a laptop and a, and a browser and we uh, I've, I've run WebRTC on my iPhone on um, uh, it, it's tough on the iPhone but uh, it, it's it's easy and works really really well on an Android phone so to use an Android phone is maybe a security de security device I thought was pretty neat um, I, I really thought it was cool that uh, Netflix was uh, another one that was looking at WebRTC um, Maybe, uh, you know, one of the things that uh, my kids like to do is one of those Xbox those Xbox parties where they'll have a bunch of people on a chat room and they're all kind of talking and they can switch with the Kinect and view each other. And, and maybe they'll watch a movie together. Maybe they'll play a game together. But, um, you know, something, uh, an idea kind of like that for Netflix, I think, would be interesting. The ability to all watch a movie together but then have a, a little you know, video chat and you can, you can sit there and, and chat with each other while you're, uh, while you're watching a movie. I thought that was kind of cool. Um, yeah, that's really cool. That's kind of right, like taking right. the concept. There's yeah. a lot of people that do that, like live tweeting, um, you know, watch a show and a live tweet and like follow a hashtag, yeah. but it'd be, yeah, much more interactive to do yeah. similar to what we're doing here, right? And have like kind of a chat yeah. log running on the side. Yeah, I was I was you like know, with your friends this week during yeah, uh, during really the neat. whiz, but uh, that was um, that was the, it. Go ahead. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, I mean, I would be doing that during uh, Game of Thrones, and I have uh, I have read the book. I, I'm put on the book. leftovers book. right now. Have you seen the leftovers? Yeah. yeah. Oh wow! Yeah, that's that's like, fascinating like fascinating um so the other web rtc application that i found incredibly fascinating like during this panel that came out was just mm -hmm. um you know the medical application and the, and the idea that you know people could um could converse with their doctors and like you know get some diagnoses and, and things like that without having to go in or you know like what um because of like the security element involved yeah. there like do you think that's like right. You know, uh, pretty far actually, out, what, or it is, are we on the cusp of the, that? The most secure way to uh, to chat on one of the most the most secure without uh, having to really go overboard and and uh, and set up set up things yourself. So by default, out of the box, WebRTC is is the really the most secure way to have a have a chat over the internet. Um, by default, it's encrypted end to end. Um, it's uh, you know, as far as far as we know, without knowing what uh, you know, what all, what everything that the NSA knows, um, it's it's a good strong encryption end to end. Um, so no, for for medical uh, uses, I I think it'd be probably one of the better ways to do it. Um, yeah, yeah, that's so interesting. Um, I, I can't <laughs> wait for that because I really I really yeah. get anxious going into the doctor's office. <laughs> 
I'd much rather talk to my doctor. Yeah, one of our, the one of our customers of is actually using it from uh, the ambulance um, into cool. the uh, into the ER center. So they've got an Android pad in the back of the ambulance, so they can they can yeah. see the patient in real time and communicate with the doctor back in the uh, in the ER in the hospital while they're in route. It's it's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that just gave me chills, like literally, like because that that's to me that's so exciting because like now now <laughs> like this technology is literally like potentially saving people's lives, you know and. You know, if you're if a doctor is communicating to an EMT or, you know, they don't have to figure out what's going on once that patient like reaches the hospital. Like that's that's pretty amazing stuff. Um, and that goes. Yeah, that gets me really excited. But um, cool. Let's let's go to one more article here. And then um, I want to talk about uh, one oh. of the case studies yeah. that, you know, your call center for a day that you guys facilitated to get set up. Okay. And then I want to go through and we've had some questions pop up here on the right hand side. I want to make sure that we address those, but why don't we um, take a look at this? This article is interesting. You know, it just talks about how CenturyLink um, is is seeing cable yeah. as an emerging like SIP trunking competitor. Competitor, um, and I I just thought that you know that was an interesting take on things that um, you know there there was some good quotes in here, um, but. You know, did you yeah, did you have um, a reaction to this when you SIP read it? Trunking is easier to to do than SIP uh, than than hosted SIP and and hosted VoIP. So once you get kind of the the basics down, it is an easier service to provide. So it would be easier for a, a cable company or a carrier. Like I said, for for us, for our carrier interconnects are are now, I think, it, you know, pretty much all a hundred percent SIP into end to end. Um, so it's, it's definitely a, uh, an, an easier service for them to buy. Once you get a couple of the kinks worked out, like DTMF, the, uh, the dial tones, um, uh, make, making sure that, that, uh, those work, uh, figuring out, uh -huh. um, how to, to transfer calls, put calls on hold. Uh, if those messages get up to you, what, you know, what you do with them, if you're a back-to-back -back user agent and, and all that fun stuff. But, um, uh, for the most part, yeah, it's it's not nearly as hard as as hosted VoIP, so uh, I could I could see them finally getting into it and uh, probably making a pretty good run at it. They can do the other the other hard part of being a trunking provider is all the telco stuff, uh, getting phone numbers, porting phone numbers from other carriers to you, and porting numbers away, um, getting toll free vanity numbers that that kind of stuff. Um, and they've been doing that for for a while and a half by whole departments that do that. So I, I wasn't too surprised. Uh, it's more that, uh, <laughs> you know, it, it, I, I, if I feel like they're getting into it a little bit late. Uh, I, I, you know, just despite some of these other articles, I, I think the, um, the peak for SIP trunking was a couple years ago. And really the future is, is hosted VoIP and WebRTC and, and uh, the integration of, of WebRTC with mobile platforms and, and and sip uh down on mobile devices things like that so uh, i i think they're in the game a little bit late but i but it doesn't surprise me that they're that they're in the game and they're able to do it yeah yeah all right great well let's um let's shift gears for a second and i know that recently you yeah. guys had an opportunity with um with the people's tv um a telephone where you, you kind of help them set up this, you know, call center for a day, so to speak. And um, so can you just tell us a little bit about that, that story and what, you know, how did they find you? Sure. And, um, so yeah. I'm going to put, how, how did this all get going? Their, uh, their URL over here in our, there you go in the chat. There we go. Um, so it's it's uh, it's people TV. It's it's content that you create. The the idea and think of think kind of like um, children's television workshop or an NPR that that type of thing. Um, and they are based out of Atlanta. And they called up and said, "Hey, we're having a telethon. Uh, it's um, during the um, uh, uh, the the Atlanta Giving Week." And we'd like to set up a basically a, a temporary telethon call center. Um, we uh, we we don't want to have to buy a bunch of phones, get a bunch of phone lines, 
do that whole thing. So uh, they they talked to a, a bunch of people, and when they called us, uh, I told them about our WebRTC product called Instaphone, and they were instantly intrigued. Uh, I said all that you would need is is a laptop, and and like we have here, just a a, a headset with a you know, a, an earbud and a microphone on it, and uh, you'd be able to set up a call center basically instantly. Um, so we had a, a little bit of uh, back and forth, but we got them a phone number. Mm -hmm. We set up uh, an ACD queue for them so that the calls would come in, go into a queue, and then could be uh, distributed among the um, the volunteers that were there for uh, for that day. Uh, and, and that was it. They, they were able to get a bunch of laptops donated just for the day and, uh, just, just headphones. And they already had a, a really nice internet connection mm. that where they were uploading, they were already streaming their programming and, and everything. So they had a nice, uh, a nice robust connection. And, uh, that was it. They had their, uh, their agents log into our web-based phone. So it's brought up a Chrome browser and put in a, their SIP address and a password logged in and they had a fully functional phone there. Uh, and they were able to take calls through this, through the same interface with the same users. They were able to take calls over a local Atlanta number, over a toll free number. And they, uh, with, with our system, you can integrate the, um, uh, uh, video calls as well. So people could go to their website, click on a button and, uh, join in on a video call and all the same, all the same agents, all the same queue. So it's pretty cool. Pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, awesome. And what was their yeah. their reaction or their response? Yeah, I mean, to it, it, the, initially like, on the, on any, the first couple phone calls, there was a, a, a lot of doubt that you know that that this could could even work. It was just such a such a strange uh, concept for them. But uh, probably a, a month prior to the event, we we did a full um, full dry run. They they got a couple laptops of people who were were there and set the thing up and and we had a whole bunch of people call in and click on their website and and did kind of a stress test of it and um people were able to answer the calls immediately and other people were in set to were able to go into the queue and then and then queued up as as other people got off the phone so uh once once we did kind of that stress test uh they were they were sold and and completely happy uh the the day of the event uh, no, no issues. Everyone was able to to log in, take calls. Um, but I, I got a, a personal phone call from um, uh, from from their CEO the day after, thanking us and and saying that you know the the that it went off with a hitch, and they were very excited. So it was great. <laughs> yeah. It's so, a, it's a tough so are market. Are you guys targeting we, uh, uh, you know, a one day you know, a one day thing? <laughs> But we 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 have been and and we do target uh, events. So uh, uh, and and temporary type events. So we have a um, a large consulting company who does golf events, um, and uh, so each one is only two weeks long, but they have the whole mm -hmm. golfing season. So they're able to go from event to event to event, and all they need is an internet connection, and phones and phones and laptops. So that, that that's a uh, that is a good vertical for us. We have we have another uh, very large customer yeah. who does uh, trade shows. So they provide um, internet access and phone service for um, for trade shows for a couple of different venues. So when you go in and you buy internet access, you buy it from them, but they can also give you a phone number and and uh, and lines and so forth. And they have they have phones um, that they that they use for that. But our service. Um, for the most part, we don't charge per phone or per user. We just charge for usage. So for those types of events, that that works really well. If that phone sits there unused for two months, we're we're not charging for that phone. So yeah, yeah, really cool. I mean, I I can see all kinds of applications for that, you know, right. and just being a lifesaver for those that do like those temporary type of events or, you know, once or <laughs> twice a year. Yeah, like emergency, yeah, yeah, emergency like, services. They don't, they don't need another, a call center of our, the whole year. Uh, our director so, um, of our customer really cool. success team, our customer service team. Um, he's a volunteer firefighter uh, here in Pennsylvania. And uh, we work with a number of uh, emergency responder uh, units where 
they have a whole uh, emergency response package data center type uh, type setup that they can it's data center in a box emergency responders in a box and they go and they set it up at a location and boom they've got everything the internet access and phones and and the whole the whole thing so so yeah it's a very interesting vertical uh and uh, it you know both just just sip and uh, especially webrdc make that make that happen it's kind of neat Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Um, well, I want to make sure we answer a couple of the questions that have come in over here on the chat. Um, one of them, let's see, this was John um, okay, he's saying, ready. let's see, my question is tough. <laughs> Good start. <laughs> We're getting more clients from Alaska and Canada. Will Alaska calls eventually cost less through OnSIP? It seems like a challenge for SIP companies. By the way, wow. OnSIP wow. saved That's our business good. because our in-house uh, Alaska and Hawaii are, are tough. They the uh, it's it's not quite a monopoly, but it's it's close in those regions, and they know they've got the uh, a geographic monopoly on on those regions, and they therefore can pretty much charge whatever they want. Uh, yeah, so across the board, so it's not just onset it's, it's not even just VoIP, it's it, across the board, uh, Alaska and Hawaii are expensive places to call. Um, uh, upwards of five cents a minute, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, now, with, uh, with our web-based calling, you could call back and forth, you can call each other for, for free, but if you're trying to call the pizza place across the street in, in Anchorage, then it's uh, then it's still going to be expensive. Um, yeah, just no no way around that. Uh, what's you know competition in those areas would would help, yeah. but it you know it's it it's a geography thing. Um, they've they've got them kind of locked up. So. Yeah. Okay. All right, and then we got another question in from another John. Um, who let's see he just said i want to discuss different codecs okay. in webrtc um yeah. and then i don't see anything uh, that's, more that's, specific that's, than that cool. i see where um so um, yeah so i don't i don't so know codex uh codex are a way to encode audio yeah. or uh, audio or video um for a, a standard voip phone uh the the two main codecs are, are one's called g722 which is this high definition codec which is really for voip call to voip call um uh, not for calls out to the pstn any call out to the public telephone network uh typically is using uh, a codec called um g711 u law or a law and that's g711 is kind of your your standard um voice uh voice codec um now uh so for mm -hmm. our for webrtc the the big thing uh especially for for our service is that both sides uh use the same codec um as long as both sides can agree on a codec we don't care what that codec is we'll we'll let the two ends talk so it can be a completely proprietary codec so let's say you come up with a um a uh, the ability to do screen sharing over some codec that that uh, that you devise. As long as both ends talk with the same codec, then that's then that's completely fine, um, and and that'll work. Um, our just want to see if I can get the um, list of the codecs that we that the Instaphone our Instaphone supports. Here it is. Uh, so G711, obviously. Uh, G722, obviously. Oh, and the uh, the Opus Codex. So we would support the full range of the Opus Codex, which are a um, high definition but uh, good compression uh, codec. So and the basically what happens is if you think of the uh, of an analog um, sine wave of of the audio of your of your voice going going through. Um, what happens is that the computer goes through and, and samples that every so often and takes little samples of what that sine wave looks like. And the more you sample it, the more accurate it's, it's going to be. Um, but the more you sample it, the more data you're going to have. So the, there's, there's a balance there between uh, sampling 
and and data size and uh, and quality. So uh, what what some of them Opus and and some others have have done is to play some nice tricks there, get a nice high sample size, but figure out a way to compress that so it's not uh, so it doesn't have a huge bloated data on top of that. Um, and for video, uh, we support uh, VP8 and uh, H.264. Uh, again, if you're talking uh, just endpoint to endpoint, we we don't care um, across WebRTC. But if you're talking from uh, uh, like one endpoint to uh, like a, a grand stream phone or, or some other phone that supports you know, that supports video but doesn't um, but isn't WebRTC, then it has to be uh, VP8 or H.264. Um, uh, that's kind of the, the, a quick rundown on Codex. Did that answer his question? Okay. No, not okay. top of my head. Yeah, I saw above he posted my, a my follow program. up. Do you know the frequency responses? Yeah. Okay. We'll have to get that. <laughs> have to get the developer to answer that one. Um, all right, great. Well, why don't we wrap it up and like zoom out a little bit? I know that um, yeah. you know you're an entrepreneur yourself. You you guys work with mostly small medium businesses. So just in general, I mean, what what are you seeing out there that um, the small business SMBs are question. struggling and, and with I, the most? It's, and what it's interesting. You know, like what, I really what's kind of the I, the main conversation that you find yourself a, having? A couple of the inbound sales queue. Uh, calls every week. I try to answer a, a couple support calls every week, just to kind of stay on top of things. And it's just uh, I'm uh, I, I answer the call just as as Mike, uh, and it's uh, it's kind of fun. Uh, every once in a while, I'll, I'll get outed and uh, and and found out, and it, it gets a little awkward then. But uh, <laughs> usually, it's fine. Um, <laughs> yeah. Right. There's a TV right. show that does that, uh, right? And I, where, like, the, I, I the do really CEO, like it. Like, it does shows up at the, it, to, as the janitor um, or something. And yeah. on the cool. on the technical side of things, it, it kind of keeps me sharp and and keeps me up to up to date with what customers are thinking and what potential customers are thinking. So on on our sales calls, uh, what people are asking for is just. Uh, it, I mean, it's even in this time of Facebook and Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat and and everything <laughs> and blab. Uh, you know, the the uh, the phone is still the lifeblood of the company. Right? Blab. If you're having issues with your phone system, <laughs> you're you're having issues with your company. If uh, if it's not reliable, then then you're having big problems. Uh, if it's not getting you the the data that you need so that you can make smart business decisions, you're you're having problems. So, uh, and those are those are really the things that people are looking for. It's still, uh, it's still not crazy. They just want to, and at the same time, they don't want to have to become phone experts. You know, usually we're not talking to, uh, you know, an, an integrator or something. We're we're talking to the business owner. We're we're or uh, we're talking to the person who just happens to be the most technical person at that company that volunteer. Like, okay, I'll go find a new phone company. You know, I'll, I'll go figure this out. Um, and they just want to the, to to do it and, and get the functionality that they need and then move on with their lives. And uh, so just keep it simple, make it quick, uh, make it make it painless, and uh, provide them the the functionality that they need, and then move on. Get get back to doing what their whatever their business is. Get back to doing that as quickly as uh, and as efficiently as possible. Yeah. All right. Well, great. Did you have anything else you wanted to add before before we close yeah. out? I I didn't. No, when's our next I was one? trying this to scroll fun. through all the Had questions. We got a lot of comments over here, so I think I think we answered them. Um, but yeah, it was a lot of fun. For those of you guys who are on, um, we're planning on doing another one next week, um, same time, same place. And so, if you'd like to join us again, um, go ahead and do that, and we'll. Um, we're going to continue to chat, you know, kind of about the latest news and things that are in happening. Meantime, and, just questions. Um, some real time we'll, applications we'll, uh, for, something, for you something know, to talk about next week. for sub trunking and That'd all that kind of stuff. Great. Thanks, Angel.
Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that'd be great. Bye. That'd be great. All right. Well, thanks, Mike, and thank you guys, everyone that was joining, and um, we'll see you next week. Okay. Bye.